So airline companies overbook their flights. The reason for overbooking is if some people are not coming, then they would have at least somebody else coming. So it, they won't go or they won't fly with less number of people. But then there is also a problem here because they can overestimate or underestimate. So if they overestimate, they need to give awards to some customers and that is cost. This is a cost, cost of overestimating. So they have to give awards so that they can get others to fly in. If they underestimate, then there is an empty seat, so the revenue is lost. That's also a cost. Similarly, ordering of clothing or fashion items and all these things are also consideration of either underestimating or overestimating. So let's take hotels. Hotels basically have very similar problems like airlines. In fact, the travel industry is very much like this. They, uh, they need to know whether to overbook or underbook. And how to do that is always a question. So let's take a question here of hotel reservation. The mean demand is five. The standard deviation is three. Now, the room rate is $80. This is the cost if overbookings are less than cancellations. So this is underestimating, which is C of U. So C of U is 80. The penalty for overbooking is 200 bucks. This is the cost if overbookings are more than the cancellations. Then you don't know what to do with the customers who are coming in. So you need to reward them somehow. And that those rewards are going to cost you money. And that is 200 bucks. So that is the CO. So now you know CU and CEO, you can find the probability of whether to overbook or underbook. So the probability is going to be less than equal to CU over CO plus CU, which is 0.2857 or 28.57%. Okay. So if I take this 28.57%. And then if I as as my probability and then find out the Z for it, which is about 55, which is about 55. So Z is equal to 55. Now we can say that that 28% the 28.57%. These are the cancellations. The cancellations will fall in this shaded area, 28.57. These are the cancellations and that will be in this area. So if you want to overbook, then we need to look at this good old equation that we all know from our statistics class, which is X bar plus Z times sigma. X bar is the mean and sigma is the standard deviation. And the Z is what you found out, which is 55. So if I use this equation, then I'm getting about three reservations that I should overbook. So with the standard mean, de mean demand of five and a standard deviation of three, I should be booking three reservations more. Okay. And that is how you calculate using this appendix E and the equation, which is this equation for any underestimating or overestimating. Now let's look at multi-period inventory systems. The first was fixed order quantity model. The second one is fixed time periodic models. And we will see the differences and we will see what we need to do to calculate this.
The fixed order quantity model is called a Q model. The fixed time period model is called a P model. So we need to know how to calculate using the Q model or the P model. So let's take a look at it. What are the differences between these two? In a fixed order quantity, the inventory remaining must be continuously monitored because you have a point as inventory goes down, you have a point that triggers to buy some more inventory. So you need to monitor continuously. In a fixed time, accounting takes place only at the end of the review period because you're going to be buying at particular intervals all these so we're going to be buying at particular intervals if this has a smaller average inventory this has a larger average inventory so sometimes this is better for certain industries sometimes this is better for certain industries these favors more expensive items these favors less expensive items for instance nuts and bolts they are very very cheap so they are less less expensive than an engine right so if it is an engine then you're going to order using the fixed order quantity if it is nuts and bolts you'll be ordering a fixed time period it is more appropriate for very important costly items it is sufficient for less important cheaper items the fixed time period okay it this requires more times to maintain this requires less time to maintain this is more expensive to implement this is less expensive to implement so those are the considerations that you need to have whether you want to go with a fixed order quantity or the fixed time period quantity whether it is a q model or whether it is a p model okay what are the things that we need to know when calculating these models in a q model we are looking at quantity order quantity q and r which is a reorder point which is also when to place the order whereas in a fixed time period model you need yes the small q which is the the quantity to order and this quantity varies over time and when the period when the review period arrives when you're going to calculate or when you're going to count rather the inventory that is the review period so when the review period counts so what we are going to do typically in this p model is you go to the store you count a hey, one two three four like that two i have 40 of these products so i need to order 10 more so when the time period comes when wednesday evening comes i'm going to order 10. so now you go before or wednesday morning and you go around and check i have 30 now so i need to order 20 now so i'm going to order 20 that wednesday evening that's how you do that t is the review period when the when you review period you might do it in the morning you might do it a couple of days by earlier whatever it is and that is the t and the q is the the order that you're going to place in this fixed time model in a fixed order quantity model we're going to say we're going to order 200 parts but these 200 parts will be ordered as soon as it dips to 
some 100 parts or 50 parts or whatever you determine. We're going to find that that time, that that number of parts that you're going to determine as a reorder, that you're going to find. Okay, so fixed order quantity models, you're also thinking about an optimum order quantity. And the assumptions are that you have enough lead time, your price per unit is constant, your inventory holding cost is based on average inventory. This is important for your calculations. And your ordering or setup costs are constant. And you're also assuming that all demands for a product will be satisfied. And those demands are going to be constant and uniform throughout the period. These are the assumptions that you're going to be doing for the optimal order quantity that you're going to be considering. So you're going to calculate Q optimum or the optimum quantity and then you're also going to calculate the reorder point. Those are the two things that you're going to be doing for fixed order quantity model. So let's say we have a reorder point here. This is the number of inventory, maybe like 25. And we are going to, let's say, order 100. And we consume. As we consume, the inventory is going to do not go down. When it reaches 25, we are going to order because we have a lead time to worry about. And that order, so this lead time gives us consumption over that period also. And we are going to order another 100. And then that is going to be consumed. We're going to order another 100. So it, we take the lead time into consideration every time we order. And we're going to consider the, the reorder point. And we're going to consider how much to order. Okay? That is a basic fixed order quantity model. Let's take an equation now. The total cost is going to be equal to the annual demand times cost per unit. This is the actual cost of the product. The annual demand over quantity times the cost of placing an order, which is the setup cost. The quantity order divided by two times the annual cost of holding. So here, all these are annual cost. So if I take this equation that we got, to find the optimal order, what I do is to take the derivative with respect to Q, and we can get this Q up. This is the equation you need to know. And this is the equation you need to know. The Q opt is going to be equal to, you remember this, EOQ? That's how we get it, the same thing. So the economic order quantity or the Q optimal is going to be equal to two times demand times the cost of the product divided by the holding cost. The reorder point is going to be equal to DL, a D bar L, okay? And the D bar L, we're going to talk about L is the lead time and this is the average demand. Just in a few minutes, I'm going to discuss a little more about R.